What's up YouTube? My name is Josh. Welcome to JDM Right Hand Drive. Today's video I'm going to be reviewing some uh, NZ wiring tr trigger kit for the RB26 but it's also going to be a double whammy for you guys that are thinking hey if I have an iPhone 13 can I start a YouTube channel is this going to be good enough? So I'm going to switch you over to my iPhone 13 um, pretty much right now and we're going to shoot the rest of the video. So let's just uh, get a quick comparison for video from this angle. So you guys can see kind of the perspective of what you guys see. So I really like this. This is just being shot in 1080p, um, wide mode, 60 frames a second. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with the cell phone just right out of the box. Um, I noticed there's not a lot of, uh, when you get like bright lights in the background like that there. With my old Samsung Galaxy S5, which is really old, you get a lot of flaring and basically just blow out. Um, this doesn't do that. And I love the capability of the wide angle lens. So this is your standard lens, which is basically how the Sony camcorder films. Um, so the advantage of this versus having to go with like a whole DSLR or mirrorless camera or Sony camcorder over there. So when I film with something like this, I'm really limited as far as I can't really get a wide angle lens without adding an external lens. And that's kind of the issue. A mirrorless camera setup is, you know, at least a grand for something that's good and that's going to be for an APS-C crop sensor if you go full frame you're spending a couple grand on just the the frame plus the lens another 500 so like three grand so my old Sony setup is like three years old uh, I've had it for about three years but this camera came out in 2016 so it's getting kind of it is starting to become kind of dated it does have a over one inch um, CMOS sensor so like the video quality is very good on it but um, what we're going to be filming today, what this video is going to be about, as far as my channel, is the NZ Wiring Trigger Kit. So NZ Wiring is out of New Zealand. And this is your, your timing gear here. And this is the um, exhaust cam gear. And you can see how this has like a little divot there. Bring it a little closer and that's going to match up to this. So once you start modifying your RB26, like mine was running around 450 wheel before I had bearing failure and some other issues going with it. But uh, this is going to give you a more stable, stable idle. And let's take a look at like the sensor and stuff. So this is a Bosch sensor. That's the model number. This looks like that's made in Romania. But there's your little pickup there. And that just counts the teeth on this as it rotates. I'd probably recommend getting, if you're gonna use this as your primary camera, get yourself like a nice cell phone mount. Um, I like this little, what is it like, Min, Mini Frodo, Manfrotto, um, this little tripod. You collapse it and use it like a tripod handle or um, there's this little ad adapter adjuster here and you can you know pivot this thing around so if you wanted to um, have some type of product or something that you're shooting that you wanted to review down here like this cam gear you can have your cell phone sit stationary while you're sitting here unboxing and talking about something I think that would give you a lot of versatility so I think that would be a good a good starting point for a channel. For so the iPhone compared to the Google Pixel, there is just no comparison. I bought this because the camera was supposed to be um, pretty much one of the best a couple years ago, and it was, but comparing like the lenses, look how dinky that little thing is compared to these guys. Um, there's just no comparison in the quality as far as what they can do. Um, and the only thing I really did for my cell phone, I just buy myself an OtterBox like I always have. This is the Defender. Definitely recommend that as well as the, the camera grip. I'll have a, dis a link in the description down below for both. Um, but that's definitely, definitely gonna help protect your investment because as you guys know, this uh, these phones are like a thousand bucks. So I did the, um, the iPhone 13 Pro um, with 256 gigs of memory and it was 1099 plus tax. Yeah, this thing is pretty awesome so far. If you guys enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing to my channel down below and smash the thumbs up button. It definitely helps out. I don't have friends. I got family. 
think it has a really good macro lens, so you can get in super close and it stays focused. So I'm pretty impressed with this, but I love that wide angle for vlogging. I just think it's really cool to have that, you know, extra perspective for when you're vlogging out wherever you're at to kind of get everything more in the frame behind you to have that capability. You can just do like cool shots for like panning left to right and like showing people. You can just show a lot more stuff. And I like the um, stabilization is really good. I'll throw some other stuff up on the screen. Um, I did some in-car footage when I was driving at the Port of Tacoma as well as working like on the ship. So this is me walking, holding the camera by hand. I wanted to check its stabiliz stabilization ability in the ship here. That's a uh, wide angle lens. This is the 1X lens. And then the 3X lens. There's the uh, concept vehicle I put up on Instagram if you guys want to check that out. Instagram link in the description below. test the in-car footage of the iPhone 13. This is just handheld, not being mounted. Um, this is 1X 1080p 60. This is some GoPro footage and you guys can see the overexposure and kind of the blowout of the uh, light past the windshield there. And back to the iPhone, I think the iPhone does a much better job out of the box automatically with not adjusting any settings at all. And walking around, I think that this stabilization doesn't match GoPro, but it's close, but the video quality is definitely better. But let me know what you guys think. For me, like when I'm vlogging in my car and in a tight space, like my old cell phone pretty much filmed like this. That's how my Sony cam camera shoots. I just like with this wide angle lens on this new iPhone, you can give the people so much more of a perspective. And I think it's really cool too when you try to make um, reels. I did an Instagram reel. If you're shooting a reel like this, you can't really see very much because the screen is so you know narrow from left to right. But when you put that wide angle, it gives the, the viewer on the other end so much more of a perspective that they can see on their phone. So I wanted to get a good look at the uh, the cover. And this is just uh, CNC um, aluminum, or it's probably billet, I think, is what I read on the website. But this is going to fit over your um, cover, like so. And then your sensor sits in here. And it comes with all the mounting hardware to put it all together. And this just gives you more stability. So as you start to tune your engine where the stock crank angle sensor um, has limitations for really fine tuning uh, your map and stuff when you start pushing more power. Um, this plugs in all just like stock, plugs right into the stock uh, wiring harness. Um, but this cannot be run with the stock ECU. You have to be running an aftermarket ECU. And I'll put a different, uh, all the different brands, I'll just throw a, a screen, a screenshot of uh, what NZ wiring, what, what they say their trigger kit will work with. Um, so yeah, so basically as your cam gear is spinning, this is, you know, just reading the signal and sending it back to your ECU and it's gonna give you a really good accurate time and make your fuel map and your tuning capabilities really good. There is no modification necessary at all. It's a direct bolt on. Only work with a aftermarket ECU because you lose the ability to clock the uh, original OEM sensor. You can clock that to get the engine into time. The only way you can adjust this to get the engine into time is by adjusting it in the ECU software. So just keep that in mind. This will not work with a stock ECU. Um, of course, if you wanted to get the best, most reliable, you can go with like some of the other brands where it actually goes off the, uh, the crankshaft versus the camshaft. But, uh... Here's the crank sensor. So that would track every revolution. I'm not sure how many times this, rev how many revolutions this makes versus the crankshaft. I think it's two revolutions for every one or three for every one. But anyway, it's supposed to be more stable. So I hope this gives you guys kind of a good up close perspective of this. And like I was saying, I just wanted to kind of make a video this week today um, I've been working like 72 hours a week. I'm working six 12 hour shifts this week, so I haven't had time to remove the engine like I've been wanting to. Um, I do have vacation coming up, so I'm gonna be pulling the engine here within like the next week. Um, but other than that, all my parts, everything are still sitting out here. I haven't really had time to mess with it. I did have a Nissan OEM manifold show up from Right Hand Drive Japan um, a couple weeks ago. 
So that's the model number. This is the uh, the N1 manifold. So it's got the large exhaust outlet. You can see how it's like machine basically just right there in that little notch. But I mean, look at this iPhone video. I think the iPhone video is very impressive. Switching back to the Sony, I just wanted to see if the Sony picked up any better detail, especially in like these close-up areas. And this does have a bigger sensor. It's a CMOS sensor. Um, so it should pick up greater detail. Yeah, and it's a little frustrating as far as the exhaust manifold. I contacted Right Hand Drive Japan because I ordered this from their OEM store. And they said that you only get one. Um, I let them know that all the other places that sell them locally in the U.S., like Z1 Motorsports or Tacoma Nissan, for roughly 770 bucks or so, you get a set of two manifolds. And it wasn't really listed when I bought it at the OEM store what exactly came with it. So I just assumed that I got two, but I only got one, so a little frustrating. So this is just going to be a plaque on the wall that I'm going to probably hang up in the garage and have a piece of RB26 history. Because um, I ordered a whole brand new set from Z1 Motorsports. They'll be here in like two months. But yeah, I guess that's kind of my fault. I should have uh, I should have contacted Z1, and, and or not Z1, I should have contacted Right Hand Drive Japan and asked. Um, their department. Hey, I'm looking at this. I could have I could have uh, Made sure how many I got so that's not really their fault. That's on me. I want to see if I can get the See that macro lens how it kicks in it's not very seamless, but it does work But yeah, I mean, this thing looks pretty cool. Pretty nice detail. But just having these extra shots, so if I go to a car show and I wanna shoot something that's in a wide angle, I can overlay this footage and kinda of use that in conjunction with my Sony camcorder. And I should be able to edit some pretty cinematic shots between these two, plus the ability of doing some cool shots with the uh, Instagram reels. That's basically why I bought the iPhone 13, so. Um, so yeah, after a, a week of, or a couple weeks of owning this, I've never owned an iPhone before. Um, I definitely don't want to go back to Android. I'm very impressed with the phone, like what it's capable of. And I've been pretty happy with it. A little pricey, but well worth the money. Um, Max, Max Peating Rod sent me over some new brackets for the Sylvia. So the suspension bracket, when I installed that over here on this car, they didn't quite fit properly. <laughs> And so they fixed the brake bracket with the pictures that I sent them. So these are supposed to match up now. So I need to take the front suspension off and put these on. But yeah, that's the wide angle. That's the 1X. So like I said, I just like the capability. I mean, I'm standing basically like right in front of this. And it gives, for vlogging and stuff, it gives you, definitely, I'm not sure like what the, the aperture would be. Like if it's a like 22 or something like that i'm not sure how far out it's back but it's i like it it's a good comparison just sitting on the toolbox um that's the camcorder this is the cell phone on wide mode and if we put it in the same spot just look how much more it shows you um, there's no bleed out from the back lights as they shine in or my pixel 3a i would get a lot of uh bleed from the bright areas so you don't get that blowout effect this is a really good test. This is my daughter's drill team and they're going out to do the halftime show at the football game. And this is a really good test for the lighting because if you guys like how bright those big spotlights are for the field, they don't wash out the camera. The lens can easily handle it. So I wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers this month. Um, I've got like almost 450 subs in a month, which is fantastic. Usually I get like 120 subs a month, uh, but I've got this one um, shipping video that I did down at Port of Tacoma that's kind of been going viral in my mind. I consider it viral. It's been getting like seven to nine thousand views a day, which I didn't have any other video that's got more than six hundred views in a day. So I'm super excited. I wanted to say thank you very much for everybody that's been subscribing. It really means a lot to me, and uh, it's exciting. After working on my channel for almost probably two and a half years, I've been pretty serious about it to finally see it start to take off. 
Um, it makes all the hard work. It makes it all worth it. So I just want to say thanks, guys. Let's get back to today's video. I'm sure, if you guys notice the uh, T-shirt I'm wearing, that's my buddy Chris's band. Everyone loves a villain. One of my uh, good time friends of like 30 years. We've been friends since we were like seven years old. So um, throw a little bit of music up for you guys to check it out. <laughs> guys my level of dedication it is almost uh, 11 30 I have to get up in six hours and go to work and I'm still editing video so for you guys that follow the channel the next video I'm gonna do I'm gonna probably um, disassemble this HKS VCAM VCT gear we're gonna take a look inside this and uh, get a good look at it on the next video and I've got all the different parts of the VCAM sitting over there as well as over here so we're gonna take all these different things apart look at the entire system talk about how it works and kind of give you guys a little bit of insight on that. Somebody wanted to see that video in the comments down below a few weeks back, and somebody else wanted to see this too. So that's why we're talking about it. Plus this gives me an easy chance to make some simple footage because I can basically come out in the garage and talk about that stuff in less than an hour versus pulling an engine is gonna take me multiple days of filming, multiple days of getting everything before I can even edit and make a video, so. But yeah, I want to get really close here and see what kind of detail. This is just a wide angle lens. That's the normal lens. I mean, you can get really close on that powder coat. Um, let's try over here. Let's get close on some items over here as well. I mean, the detail is good. But yeah, like I said, no flaring from that window. Like the camera does a really good job with lighting adjusting. That was the big limitation with my Google Pixel. I would just get light flare and the stuff in the background would always blow out. And that's why I've always liked filming on my Sony camera because the one inch, I think it's like a 1.38 inch sense CMOS sensor. It does really good for light exposure, for overexposure automatically. But yeah, just like that wide angle lens just gives you that cinematic shot that you wouldn't be able to get um, up close, giving you the detail. Where if I'm in a 1x shot, I gotta come way back here, like another foot away. Where here I can get, I can capture all that. So it's just nice to have that capability depending on what you're trying to capture, what you're trying to shoot. I think this thing is freaking awesome. But yeah, just like this wide angle lens doesn't, uh, blow up with light that's the 1x lens I mean shooting right into the sky it's uh it's a really nice setup and then as far as like stabilization I'm just walking around holding it handheld I mean if you put it on a gimbal this thing would be awesome but the capability of that wide angle for vlogging and doing car shows and stuff like that um, this is going to be a a nice little handheld, especially to have in a pinch if, say I'm out and about, and I just happened to see something I wanted to shoot, but I forgot my main camera at home. This would allow me to shoot good enough quality to where when I edit it, I'm not gonna be disappointed. So the other few things I'm gonna be working on, um, I'm gonna be going to the Seattle International Auto Show this Thursday, which I believe is the 11th. So I'm gonna go down there, it's back at Lumen Field Event Center. We're gonna shoot all the new um, cars. So I'm going to probably make like 10 different videos while I'm down there. I'm going to spend like nine hours there. My buddy David's going to come that I have been friends with for over 20 years. He's going to be my cameraman. And we're just going to vlog all the new cars and look at all the interiors and get as much content and as much exposure I can. I think that's going to really help grow the channel because a lot of people are interested in new cars versus the guys that are hardcore, hardcore Skyline and Sylvia fans. That's uh, kind of a very narrow spectrum of audience that's looking at that. So so yeah, you guys stay tuned. I'll have a lot of new content coming out from the Seattle Auto Show, and I hope you guys like it. Um, it's definitely different, like vlogging on this camera for me. I'm so used to holding my Sony camera that I actually kind of feel like nervous and uncomfortable holding this because it feels different than this is usually what I'm holding in my hand. So I'm just used to shooting like this. So, hey guys, you know, welcome JDM Right Hand Drive. I'm used to seeing that thing in my face. I'm used to staring in the lens. 
and vlogging with this other one here. It just feels different. But yeah, guys, going back to answer the question, can you use an iPhone 13 to shoot YouTube? Absolutely. Um, with all the different lenses and the macros and the slow motion, the time lapse, all the different stuff and the camera quality built in, it'd be a hell, it'd be a hell of a little package to get started. And with YouTube, if you're going to ever grow a channel, you just got to get started. You got to upload content. You got to upload it at least weekly or your channel's never going to grow. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I know this video is kind of all over the place, talking about multiple things, multiple projects, different cameras, talking about the wiring kit. Hope you guys liked it. If you do, leave me some comments down below what you thought. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you uh, next time. Peace out. Have a good one.